So um, we did see some hands go up here for uh, startups here. So how many of you here uh, signed up for NPC to really get funding or get some money in the bank for your ventures? Can I see some hands go up? At least three, four. I thought you just got funded. <laughs> Already ready for the Series A. Okay, so I see. I do see a few hands. Uh, so the I was talking to Ravi Guraj and trying to uh, you know come up with the theme for the session. And you know one of the things we were discussing was, uh, hey, we all know you know what is there in a B plan? There is so much of templates, everything about it, but. What really is, uh, uh, you know, the value add that we want to bring here is to bring in some real practical experience because what works for me doesn't work for you sometimes. Or wor what works for me in an early stage or, uh, or a very, very, in uh, you know, beginning days doesn't work for me three months later, doesn't work for me six months later. So there's constantly a, a learning, a reach out, what uh, other panelists were talking about, uh, you know, happens. So uh, how many of you here have written business plans, um, email to investors and the thinking what's happening you know why are they not responding to me uh, has there been any experience with anybody or I, I see a few hands go up but the same thing uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know trying to understand uh, uh, you know the nuggets of what really happens behind the scenes so what we thought was to bring a panel of, uh, of speakers who have actually done it uh, by way of raising money for their businesses and we also have people who have done it for uh, you know seed round and now doing it for a series A so you'll get a varied experience of what I call as the hacks so you can literally walk away with 10 or 15 nuggets here and and, and I'm sure there's a, a Twitter feed you can go there and vote for what you think is the best one you know that you think is is applicable for your business that will be good from a social media perspective so we're going to have that discussion here and probably have the last uh, five to seven minutes for questions uh, if people can think about the problems you are having in your startup in your business plan the panel will come up with a hack uh, potentially based on what has worked or what has not worked for them right so that's the the, the format that we're going to uh, follow so uh, first I want to uh, introduce Raj uh, Raj Valli uh, he uh, uh, is a founder CEO of Tapter he's traveled all the way from New Jersey for this uh, panel uh, next we have uh, Mohan from sign up uh, a Bangalore based uh, startup and they've just about closed uh, seed round and now looking to grow and uh, as you already know they're looking for funding for Series A. <laughs> uh, then I have Shivku. Uh, Shivku uh, is the founder CEO of uh, Exotel. Uh, again they've uh, raised a uh, uh, you know, couple of rounds of funding and now looking to further grow. So please uh, welcome all the uh, panelists here on stage. So we have about uh, 20 minutes. So let's try to optimize this time as much as we can. Uh, let's each of the panelists maybe starting with Shivku. So about you, about your company, and you know, so uh, the folks here know the perspective from which you know you're going to be addressing all the uh, you know questions and the responses. Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Shiv Kumar. People call me Shivku. I started Exotel about three years ago. Um, we are about 25 people now. We clock about a million and a half hundred in revenue. We have about 600 customers. I've raised a couple of rounds, one from friends and family very early stage and uh, um, a seed round from uh, Bloom Ventures and Mumbai Angels about two years ago. And I also recently was in the lookout for a Series A, uh, which did not close on time. So I, I can definitely also talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, at Exotel, we give... Uh, virtual phone numbers so to speak to companies in India so this is completely India focused all my customers are in India and they all pay me in rupees um, so uh, you can also call it virtual EPBX or virtual phone numbers um, it's a little bit uh, uh, you know anybody and so right now of course our product offering has expanded quite a bit so we also do call center setups uh, all the way to the left and we also help marketing teams we, we do conferencing we do SMS so uh, it, it's a suite of products now depending on whether you are a small business or a really large company uh, folks like Ola, Redbus, Taxi for Sure, Flipkart, uh, Godrej all of these guys are our customers. Thanks Shivku. Mohan? Hi uh you hear me? Yeah. Hi, my name is Mohan Gopalakrishnan. I'm the CEO of SignUp. Um, 
just quickly about myself, I have about close to 29 years of experience in the industry. I worked in the U.S. for 20, uh, 19 of those years, uh, relocated to India. I also headed uh, the India operations of a startup, Efficient Frontier, which got sold to Adobe very recently. So I've done a lot of work in the digital marketing area. And uh, prior to that, I was a techie. So uh, about sign up, sign up, we are, uh, we call ourselves the location or the local marketing cloud. We provide a set of services that enable small businesses, and our market is primarily the US. We're expanding into the UK, we're going into EU, but right now we are focusing on the US market, which is about uh, uh, 12, 12 million plus of local businesses. And we provide a set of services that enable to improve the performance of the marketing. I mean, we, we manage their presence, we manage their reputation, we manage their loyalty, we help them track interactions. So, and we do it at a very low cost. See, one of the things about SMBs is that their marketing budget is not something which can go into ad spend. And uh, some more background about our company, our, one of my co-founders, Ashwin Ramesh, used to run a company in the local marketing space before we all decided to put together sign up. And so, in a way, you know, we come, I mean, our, our, our founding team comes with a lot of domain expertise in that space specific area. So uh, sure. that's, that's all I have to say about yeah. Thanks, Mohan. Raj? <coughs> hey, thanks, Sandy. Uh, my name is Raj Valley. I'm the CEO of a company called Tapter. We are in the business of disrupting how the learning process works. Uh, prior to starting my startup four years back, I was uh, chief of marketing for a $4 billion NYSE listed company. Um, the most important reason why I started my company was because I was very unhappy with my job. Uh, because I felt that I was so passionate about education, I figured that, you know, I was moonlighting for a couple of years, uh, trying to do my uh, startup, and uh, you know, you know, did many things which I'll talk about during the course, and I'll stay back and address as many questions as possible. But the most important thing that I realized was that the day I decided I was going to actually start a startup was the most happiest day of my life and the most crappiest day of my life. Because I realized that I was not going to get a paycheck anymore. So I left the cocoon of my comfort zone. And uh, today I'm very excited to share with you that uh, Tapter is not only disrupting the education space in uh, the US. We today have customers in Australia, New Zealand, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, South Africa, India. And we are growing uh, leaps and bounds every day. Uh, one of the main things that I'll talk about today, and I'll be more than happy to discuss uh, elaborately as well, is the focus on being a startup founder is be very comfortable in your skin. I think that's probably the biggest hack I'll, I'll talk about because self-actualization is the first hack that you have to go through. Uh, we'll talk more about it, but that's pretty much it. Sure, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so maybe we'll start with Raj, and if uh, you can reflect upon uh, your Tapra experience and, and, and rewind the clock uh, to the days when it was idea to you know the business plan version one to maybe version whatever now. So what are the things uh, uh, you know that uh, has started working and what you can term as a hack? And share maybe a few nuggets and we'll go in this order. Uh, sure. Uh, I do have uh, five slides that I want to share with you. Uh, maybe if you can yeah, maybe that up. Let me check. Uh, as uh, Sundi is pulling it up, just giving you a quick background on my fundraising uh, us. I don't believe I have one yet, but uh, uh, we have raised successfully a seed round. We are actually in the process of successfully raising a Series A. Uh, we have also, you know, two funding rounds successfully. And uh, the most important thing that we realize is that uh, someone was talking in the earlier panel about uh, having multiple versions of pitch decks. I think that if you don't have uh, 150 versions of pitch decks that you have done, I think something is wrong with you or the people you're talking to because you're not getting enough feedback. Uh, because uh, you will realize that, and I, guys, I'm going to be brutally honest here, because if you want to be an entrepreneur, be ready to make sure that uh, you are going to be told no 
99.9% of the time. Uh, not because you're bad, not because your idea is bad, but because people do not understand what you're trying to communicate. Uh, communication is a two-way street. It's not about what you say, it's what the other person is trying to hear. If you internalize that, then I think you would go through all kinds of iterations. Uh, so there is no bad feedback. There is only brutally honest feedback. So if you develop a very thick skin, you'll do enormously well. Even if your startup fails, whatever you're going to do right after your failed startup is going to be enormously successful. So don't think of this as, hey, my startup is going to be succeeding or failing because I don't have the whatever, you know, the chops to actually make my founding startup work. But it's going to be most important that you become a better human being because of the process that you're going through. And that's the only thing that I'm going to leave with you guys, you know, at the end of the session. Uh, so, so when you talk about, uh, you know, the audience, you know, I think this is a very cliched first slide, right? Everybody talks to you in presentations and you talk about, hey, you know, I, I really want to understand who you're pitching to and all of those things. I really mean this. Uh, the person who you're pitching to, you know, in my early days of pitching, I have spoken to guys who want to be entrepreneurs, who have $5,000 of cash and pretend that they're going to give you lots of money. To guys who really have lots of cash and who really mean that they want to give you money. You need to know who you're talking to. And for you to know who you're talking to, you need to actually size them up first. You know, so not everybody is an investor. I have actually become very comfortable in my own skin that 50% of the investors, I tell them, you're not an investor, you're an insurance agent masquerading as an investor. Because they all want to have risk-free investments. So I tell them, if you want risk-free investment, I am not the right person. You should be in the insurance business. I, and I'm not ashamed to say this, and you should not be either, because if you truly believe in your business and you believe there is a market, it's okay to have 95% of the people say no to you, but it's not okay for you to think that there is no business. Now, you know, I want to correct myself here, right? I don't want you to think that you are right and they are wrong all the time. You are probably wrong 95% of the time, because they're giving you feedback and you need to internalize that feedback, but know your audience. Who are you pitching to and why do they need to listen to you first? What is in it for them? Right? And that's what he, you have to think about, right? If I'm running an education company, I'm trying to pitch to somebody who is actually only investing in mobile space. I should not be offended if the guy doesn't get ABC or what I'm talking about here. So you're wasting your time, right? So think about your audience and think about who you're talking to. Uh, I really mean this honestly, because when you think about an idea, you think about the pain point, uh, you know, lots of entrepreneurs, you're talking about either VIP or, you know, marketing or any of those things, you think about a customer pain point. So you find something fantastic and you think it's going to work. And then you realize that, oh my God, I just found this thing and I really think that my customer or my investor is going to buy it. But think about this, right? You are actually pitching to a guy who wants to make more money, right? The left side here or on your, on your left side here, the guys who want to give you money means that he wants to have you price your product to the nth degree that's going to give them the maximum profitability. Guess what? The guy who's going to actually make you profitable and successful is the guy who's going to actually, you know, I'm sorry, I actually reverse the money, right? The guy who's going to give you the money is the guy who's going, he's going to be, uh, you know, uh, the investor. The guy who's going to be taking the money is going to be a customer or the other way around. Because the customer is going to pay you the money and the guy is going to basically two opposite sides. One guy is interested, you have to take money away from the customer's pocket for you to put money in your company and you have to give that money back to your investor because ultimately it's about exit, exit business here. How much of money you can actually take. So if you go tell somebody that I have an awesome business idea and here is what, why my customers are going to do this, if that doesn't resonate with how the investor is going to make money and you're going to talk about how the customer is going to be happy, you may be confusing the heck out of your investor because he doesn't see the value proposition. So the value prop for, I actually, my very first pitch, I went and talked to an investor about why I think I had the most brilliant idea and he was looking at me like, why do you think that's going to make me money, right? So you need to think about that. So the other thing that, unfortunately, um, dreamy-eyed entrepreneurs, and I was one of them, think is that you somehow, we somehow think that fundraising is a finite transactional experience, that I pitch something fantastic and they're going to give me money at the end of the pitch. It's like going and meeting somebody for dinner and expecting to actually propose to them and they're going to get married to you at the end of the dinner. Forget it. It's not going to happen. It takes 
takes probably six months to ten months if you are lucky. How many people met the first person in your life and actually got married to them in six months or ten months? Not very likely. So don't have expectations that you're going to start a relationship and actually have money in your pocket in less than ten months. You're deluding yourself big time. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and you're really serious about actually making money, try to make sure that you are really thinking about how long it's going to take. And trust building is all about uh, trust building is all about being authentic. You can't get married to a fake person by pretending that you're somebody that you're not, because it's going to come back and bite you. So usually thinking that I'm pretending to give you advice about my experience. Okay. So authenticity counts. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, thanks, Raj. Uh, let's hear uh, you know your perspective, uh, pass it on to Mohan. <coughs> yeah, I don't have any slides, so I've got sure. some notes instead. Yeah. Uh, so this, I'll, uh, I mean, uh, I was just hearing Raj's experience, right? And I can relate to a lot of that. But our process at sign up to raise funding was a little bit different in the sense that. We got, I mean, uh, we got money from the first person that we talked to. We did talk to other people, right? And we didn't take it far enough because uh, we, we had gotten to the right point at the right time, right? And uh, so, and the other, uh, the other aspect, of course, I mean, and which I have to say is walking into the funding process because we had an experience. We had experience in the domain going in. Uh, we actually had the expertise. We made money from it before. We were pretty confident that we could raise the money. And we had other sources of raising money. So the, 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 uh, having said that, right, I mean, a lot of things that uh, Raj brought up here are actually true. Okay, one of, one of the things is that when you deal with the investor, I mean, there is a trust building that that happens for us. Even though we, I knew one of the investors, it took us a, a, a three-month cycle. Uh, you you really need to uh, think about a few things here. One of the things that was going good for us is we were already making money. There was traction. There was a ramp. So. Uh, we were not waving our hands in the air. It, it, it wasn't a sexy idea. It was basically, uh, we basically are uh, promoting marketing for local businesses, right? It's it's a down to earth thing, but it was making money. It made money month after month after month, right? Uh, so that that is one one important thing there. Okay. The other thing that we did, which which I thought was a mistake, and uh, uh, is that when we uh, showed up on the for the first meeting that we had. Uh, we showed up with a 40 page, 40 slide deck or something like that with every single detail and all kinds of jargons covering all our ends. And we were very, very lucky that we had a sympathetic investor who put up with us the first time, right? Uh, truth of the matter is, if you ever go to see an investor, take a seven slide deck. Do not go beyond that. Right. Uh, there was a hack. Uh, by the time we got into a second meeting, we had modified it. By the time we went to the third meeting, we had just gone with numbers. Right. I mean, so y I mean, you need to have an. I mean, y your idea should be there. Your market size, what technology, what product, metrics, tra uh, traction. Okay, the team. I mean, and how much you want. Okay. I mean, this is kind of something that. Uh, I think it's very, very important. Keep your presentation small so that you have time to talk. You got an hour. You got seven slides, right? People shouldn't be reading slides. I think you should have time to talk. It's very, very important. Um, the other important thing that, I mean, again, my experience. I haven't gone through, go, gone and I, I've pitched to about three investors, got funding from one. Um, so my experience of doing this is not as much as somebody who's done it with 50, but. Uh, most certainly, uh, what I would I would tell you is that y you're going to have. I mean, if your if your investor is interested in your idea, you're going to have multiple meetings, right? Probably three. If you don't close it by the fourth, uh, I don't think that much is going to happen, right? I mean, of course, I've heard of cases where people would uh, say, "Come back after six months, and uh, you know, we look at your business again." What we did right was. Between one meeting and the other, we kept our investor scrupulously informed about the progress that we're making, the traction, right, the ramp, 
And we actually forced meeting after meeting after meeting. Because we're saying we're doing this, the investor would say, Sripati or Bala, Bala would say, come by and see us, then we tell them about the progress, and, and then again we went ahead and did this, and, and then it happened the third time. And we knew by the time it happened the third time that we showing them progress, we, we, we felt good about ourselves, right? Uh, and that was a very, very good thing, okay? I, I tell you the bad thing about that. I mean, I, I also want to give you a downside. We are very focused on running a business. We are not focused on making presentations, okay? So we, we wanted to get our numbers up. We wanted to basically uh, hook or crook, d double the, uh, go from $1,500 to $300, $3,000 to $6,000 to $10,000, right? I mean, and we basically met the day before our presentation, cobbled something together. We had a fantastic g guy in our founder team who, who, who whips our presentation really well. We're very lucky because I can't do it for nuts. And then, we basically didn't even have time to talk about what are you going to talk about or what am I going to talk about. So we wound up talking over each other. That is a bad thing because we didn't do any planning. Right? The one thing you got to remember is if you have the time, make sure that you plan uh, what you communicate. I mean, plan what each of you is going to communicate. Right? I mean, because they get, the investor gets a sense of the team when you do that. We didn't have the time, but you know what? We, we, I mean, if I had to go back, I'd much rather have spent my time building the numbers, building the technology, making this happen, because I think that is what landed us the thing. We, we, we are a honest, down-to-earth, boring startup that investors saw, saw potential in, right? Um, no, nothing sexy about us. I mean, I'm being very honest here. <laughs> hey, thanks, thanks, Mohan. Why, why don't we go to Shivku and... Yes, do you have more points? Uh, no, I don't want to eat in your time. No, that's fine. No, we'll get back to you once Shivku is able to. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Sundi. And I completely agree with both the point, all the points that uh, both of you have raised. I think I've almost done everything that they've said. So uh, I think you have a 100% hit rate on almost all the points that everybody has said. However, I think. Uh, 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 many of these are actually hygiene or necessary conditions, but not sufficient conditions. Um, uh, and I also don't know what the sufficient condition is actually. Um, so there are. A, so I have a. I have two things to share. I have a mental model that I have in my mind before I uh, go talk to an investor. So uh, if somebody were to. Uh, catch me on the road and then they say hey can you give me thousand rupees <laughs> I, I actually have thousand rupees to spare right um, and they say that uh, uh, you know what I'm gonna take thousand rupees and I'll give you back lots of money right so what are the kind of questions that will go in my mind uh, and how should uh, I try to answer so this investor that I'm basically he's doing whatever he is doing and I'm gonna go interrupt him and I'm gonna tell him that I have a great plan give me money I'm gonna return you back so much so I think that's that's the mental model that I have so I think uh, uh, if I were to, if a random guy on the road is going to come and ask me for a thousand rupees, a few questions will pop up in my mind, like who are you? Uh, which is trust, I think. So, you know, how do I know that you're going to be here and you're going to come back and give me money? Uh, and then, so he talked about domain knowledge, like how do you even know what you're talking about? How do I know that you actually know what you're talking about? Uh, then, when are you going to give me this money back? Uh, which is, I guess, the exit point. How much money are you going to give me back? Uh, so I think these are the kind of questions that you need to sort of answer, uh, first of all, in your own head and second to the investor, whether you do it through a presentation or a, or a, or a business plan is rather immaterial, I think. But that's really the mental model and I hope uh, uh, many of you will find that useful. <coughs> uh, I think that uh, there are some differences between raising a seed round or a sub 1 million round and a 1 million plus sort of round and these days series A seems to be 5 million so let's just say 1 million and 5 million. Um, I think at 1 million you can get away with passion. Uh, I think you can get away with uh, forming a good team uh, and you can get away by saying that I'm going to change the world but I think uh, a series A or beyond is probably not that. Uh, so. Uh, I, I was, I am an extremely passionate guy, uh, at least I used to be an extremely passionate guy, workaholic uh, and also rather very self-sufficient sort of guy. Like if I said I'd do something, actually I had sort of all the skills that I wanted to make something happen. I wrote code, I was a product manager, I have sold to the first 20 customers, I wrote my own website, I know power, uh, uh, no, I use GIMP, not uh, Photoshop. So I can actually like 
create a tech startup all by myself in my room and that's what I did when my first startup which was called Rupit. So I think the credibility part and I also worked with Yahoo, I've hung out with startup guys for a very long time. I, tend to know a lot of people always. So I think some of those kinds of things got answered. And mostly people looked at me and they probably said, look, this looks like a you know guy who's uh, you know going to do something with his life. And maybe he will fail, but uh, there's a high chance that he's going to give it his best. And maybe that's probably what clicked, actually. Uh, because I was, uh, uh, I was uh, as one of the in, uh, potential investors, put uh, too, smart, too smart for my own good. Uh, and that sort of, you know, I keep hearing that thing in my head all the time. So uh, anyhow, uh, so this was all seed round and I think I pulled it through passion. I think series A was uh, difficult uh, largely because there were a number of macroeconomic factors that uh, I had to address uh, before uh, I could get somebody to part with $5 million. Um, I think broadly, uh, so we, I mean, we, Leaving all the hygiene things outside, traction is important. So, and we were doing all of that actually. So, we had great numbers. We continue to grow even today. You know, I am actually extremely satisfied with my business. Uh, with or without money, I'm, I know that I'm going to create a reasonably large business. So, I think there was something tactical that was missing in the in the pitch. Uh, and that tactical is over and above. We are great at design. We write very good code. We keep our customers happy. Uh, our churn is low. All of this is hygiene, actually. Everybody wants to keep their customers happy. Everybody wants to have low churn numbers. So, things that something tactical was what was missing. I feel, and I think maybe you can call it the story, or maybe you can call it differentiation. Uh, so, in my uh, setup, so I think so there was one uh, large guy. Uh, who had already raised a uh, significant amount of money uh, in comparison to me. So I had to sort of pitch my company against somebody who raised a Series A about a year ago. So this was rather difficult. But I can sort of see how he may have sort of, the tactical thing that I have in my mind is he could have now gone and told the investors, uh, don't put money into these little, little guides, put a lot of money in me, perhaps I can go and acquire them for cheap. Right? So that's a very tactical thing, that's a very daily thing, you know what I mean? Sure. So uh, I think, uh, <laughs> Uh, so that was probably what was missing uh, in, in my pitches. Uh, so that's my learning. So I think those are the two things that I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Shivku. Uh, so I know we are running too close to the time here. What I want to do is I know I cut you short maybe if there is, if there is something you want to share before I uh, open one the… One little thing that yeah, I, I, yeah, while, I… While he's uh, you know, putting that uh, point together, if uh, you can line up your questions, I think we may yeah. take one or two questions from the audience. Yeah. So the one, one thought process that kind of we ran into our heads is how do you put up a team together because uh, everybody talks about team being important I mean uh, the investor investor invest in the team they invest in the idea they invest in the execution right uh, I think I mean I've given this a thought if this is not a hack but I just thought I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you I think you need to have a team where everybody has a role to play is competent knows what they're doing Right? It's not just chemistry, right? I mean, don't, I've seen this happen a lot where somebody just picked up their best buddy and, and tried to run something and, you know, th that person doesn't have the skills to do anything. So you, you really need, the, 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 the team aspect is really, is chemistry plus competence, right? It's chemistry plus competence in that particular area that you're working at, right? And I just wanted people to keep that in mind. I mean, that was the last piece that I wanted to say. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, can you go through uh, questions? No, I, you know, I, I shouldn't have something to say. No, I just have a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, wait. yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm guessing a lot of you already knew your investors when you actually went to them, right? You probably already knew them or you knew them through a first degree contact or a second degree contact or a third degree contact. If I'm a student or someone with no connections, nothing, I don't know any investor, I don't have an uncle who can put money in me, are there any hacky ways in which I can get in front of investors for them to actually be interested in talking to me or putting money in me or whatever it is? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll say this and this has been said as a cliche response and I'll repeat it because it's true for me and it's been true for everybody else. If you can't figure out a way to get to an investor, you can't be a successful entrepreneur, period. So figure out who knows investors, aunt, uncle, uncles, cha-cha, chachi, whoever it is, it doesn't matter, right? Figure out somebody, fall in their legs, you know, go to the grocery market with them three times, ride the same bus, it doesn't matter. Go to the conference, talk with them, figure out a coffee, buy them coffee, do whatever it takes, right? 
That, yeah, I'm telling you guys, I have, today I have my, when I started my entrepreneurial journey, I had zero investor access. Today I have 200 investors in my LinkedIn. So, and I can tell you that each one took at least four coffees. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, and again, uh, just to add uh, what Raj is mentioning, you know, as a student, uh, you know, one thing that was, uh, you know, pointed out was, uh, and this is again a hack uh, that you figure out um, over a period in time is to find that uh, that middleman, right? Uh, usually, investors, uh, uh, you know, as you know, by nature of uh, you know the number of companies, uh, emails, phone calls come, the inbox is always full. So, how do they really even filter out and reach out to somebody is based on an introduction. So, think about that as a key thing because that will at least get you an opportunity to bubble up the stack and have an opportunity to have the coffee so that is something that you know you need to really develop and uh, and really do some research to find out if I want to get to him who are the three likely people who have who are like the right or the left hand who listen to them and so that's one of the things that you can look uh, out of as a student could be a professor it could be you know alumni uh, who are part of your network who are already successful so I think you need to dig in and you know find out this is funny, just one, one sure. thing to say I'm sorry to take away time from your question so uh, the one thing I forgot to mention is you should use marketplaces like angel list okay Bec and not just use it by I mean putting yourself there keep on doing something with it every day so that you're, you're trending all the time okay that makes it uh, very uh, I mean that makes uh, investors have actually contacted us through angel list that has happened for us yeah. About agents, I mean, a long time ago, if you had to talk to the government, there were a set of agents and the professionals. And now there is this new series and vertical of all that has just opened up. Our organizations or people who are saying, Mila denge, or we will get you to the... How reliable are these guys who are going to get us to those magical uh, people called investors? Uh, these organizations which are telling, we will fix your pitch, we will take a you know professional fees or a cut out of the money that you're going to get. Stay one million miles away from these guys. <laughs> okay, are you else? talking about iBankers? List of organizations which uh, they claim as their clients, uh, who have they have got funding for them organized. So I will make the pitch for you, uh, even if it's seven slides, twelve slides, which is the right thing to do. And uh, and many of these points that have been discussed were also you know told by them as well. And they look very professional and and you have a great idea. So it looks like I'm pitching twice. I'm pitching to the guy who's going to help me pitch to the final pitch. So there are so many pitches in between the final pitch. So this, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we are now prepared to wake us up at two in the morning, we'll pitch. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but is that the right place to go to? No. So I have, so not I, in my opinion, but. No, I think uh, 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 important uh, piece in this puzzle. I think uh, beyond a certain point, it just uh, sucks in too much time. And uh, would you be able to get access to all the investors? I think you will. There are iBankers who come and tell me that you. I already know that you can go and find investors if you want to. So I think that's not really the. So I think they. Uh, two things they do. One is they actually help you uh, fine tune the story a lot. Uh, on one side. So I think finally the pitch you are going to go and deliver. It's not about the presentation, right? But uh, background check about you know, who this investor is, what he likes, what he doesn't like, you know, what sort of pitches he likes, what sort of investments he's made before, all of this takes time. So I think it, he, he, they, these people tend to save a lot of time, number one. Uh, and uh, number two, I think uh, it is difficult to fix your own voice in your own head, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it would be nice for you to have somebody ask you the questions in front of you so that you can sort of think about it. I don't know, maybe some people can do it, but I can't do it. So in that sense also, I think uh, these people, this is like a bouncing board for you to, like, is this the story that you think is going to sell? Why do you think this is going to sell? Sort of questions you can ask this guy. So I think there are two, three ways in which these people help, but maybe not for a seed round or perhaps not even for a series A, but I think beyond that, I think it, it, it definitely helps. There are too many things going on for you to figure it all out, out yourself. Perfect. Hey, uh, thanks, Shivku. Uh, in the interest of time, I want to quickly wrap up with uh, you know the summary of what we went through as hacks uh, you know initially we heard themes like you know know your audience very well if it's an investor if it's a customer and the pitch has to be completely different you know two different decks and it's not one deck that's going to uh, you know pretty much serve every audience we also heard about uh, you know the long journey the relationship that you're going to engage in with the investor so don't look at this is a transaction or one-time meeting. It's going to you know, happen over weeks, months, depending on what stage you are. Then we uh, learned about a few hacks about uh, no jargons. Uh, I think we've heard over and over again very, very crisp decks, not over, seven, eight, twelve, depending on what your different, uh, no, your businesses, and. Uh, 
we also heard about uh, the the planning part and communication you know do a rehearsal you know make sure what you're going to do so you are able to communicate the team and what they uh, bring in as a flavor uh, to the uh, to the business and then we also uh, talked about uh, uh, you know the the needs change as the stage of the company changes you know passion drives early stage but then when you're going in for the second round for bigger amount i think that's it's more uh, things that are tactical and a better uh, you know impactful story i think i think those are the nuggets that we got out of it so really thank uh, uh, you know the panelists to come and share these things and uh, look forward to you know, having you in the next uh, two days at the NASCAR.